Hey everyone, welcome to another limited color palette video. Today we are going to check out these three colors from the brand Blocks. This is Lemon Yellow, this is Blocks Red, and this is Cobalt Blue. I've already added some water onto the pens to soften the paint so that I can swatch them out. I was swatching this color out earlier when I realized that I have written the name wrongly. This is supposed to be Lemon Yellow, not Primary Yellow. And the pigment that is used for Blocks Lemon Yellow is PY184. According to handprint.com, this is supposed to be Bismuth Yellow. This pigment, this is different compared to Daniel Smith's Lemon Yellow, which is PY175. The next color is Blocks Red. This is PR254. According to handprint.com, this is supposed to be pyro red. But blocks they have pyro red as well. Their pyro red is PR255. And the last color is cobalt blue. I'm not sure what's happening with my paper. It seems to be repelling the paint. This is PB28. The color is actually quite close to ultramarine. We'll wait for the colors to dry before we talk a bit more about them. But from what I can see, they are quite transparent except for lemon yellow, which is semi-transparent or semi-opaque. So now let's paint the color wheel using these three colors. So we have lemon yellow. I'm going to add a bit of red to it. Let's add a bit more red to it. You can get a rather peach-like color. And this is blocks red without any mixing. And now let's add blocks red with cobalt blue. A bit more cobalt blue. And a bit more. More blue and less red. And this is cobalt blue. And lastly, we'll mix a green with lemon yellow and cobalt blue. Let's add a bit more blue to it. And now let's take a look at the type of grays we can get from the three colors. So using this green, I'm going to add a bit of blocks red to it. A very nice neutralized tone here. I like it, I like this color. Let's have more yellow and red and then we'll add the blue to it. So this is yellow and red and let's add some blue to it. So it's a bit greenish now. So if it's a bit greenish, let's add a bit more red to it. Let's turn this a bit cooler by adding some cobalt. So with cobalt you can get a very nice a cooler grey tone. And now let's mix the three colors together in concentration to see if we can get a black or a color that is very dark. So this is a lot of cobalt. You can definitely get a very dark color. And if you dilute this, you can get a nice gray. The colors are almost dry. Let's take a closer look at them. So with Blocks Lemon Yellow, this is a bit warmer compared to the lemon yellow that I've been using from Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith's version is definitely much brighter from what I can see. 
So if you need a lemon, lemon yellow, if you want to mix really bright greens, this is the yellow to go for. The next color is Blocks Red. This is a nice transparent warm red. As mentioned earlier, this is also known as Pyro Red. And lastly, we have Cobalt Blue. This is also transparent and I see some granulation in it. Not as much compared to Ultramarine perhaps. These are the secondary colors that can be mixed from the three primary colors. So we can get a pretty warm orange from Lemon Yellow and Blocks Red. I think this color here, it's uh, warmer because of Blocks Red, which is a rather intense color. And for purples and violets, well, it's a bit more subdued because warm red and warm blue, well, these are the types of purples you can get. For green, you can get a yellow green. This is actually quite nice. And if you add a bit more blue to it, this is almost like phthalo green. This is a bit darker and this is great for painting trees, foliages, shadows in the green areas. You just have to add a bit more red to it and you can get really dark shades like this. These are the neutral tones, the grays. I like the colors here. You can get rather dark values using a lot of cobalt blue and blocks red. These are the colors that we'll be using today to paint this sketch that I have drawn last year. If you want to check out the video that I have made for this sketch, the link is in the video description below. And this is the reference photo that I will be working with. This is actually a screenshot from the video. So it was a rather cloudy day. There aren't any strong shadows. So I'm just going to paint this as it is. I see some grays, a lot of white, a lot of greens, a lot of dark greens, some shadow, um, not shadow, like it's like darker shades here and here and here. All right, let's get started. The brush that I'm using today is a Navskaya Palitra Sable brush. This is made in Russia. So I'm going to paint with yellow. First, yellow and orange. So remember, this lemon yellow, this is not that transparent. So if you want it to be more transparent, you have to add a bit more water to it. As much as possible, I try to paint on location. But sometimes because of the lack of time, I have to uh, work at home. So this is uh, one example where I have to work at home from reference photos. When blocks red is mixed with lemon yellow, the result is not transparent. That's because lemon yellow it wasn't transparent in the first place. So we, we sacrifice some transparency. And now I'm going to paint the grays. I'm going to mix the grays using the three primary colors. So I want to paint the sky. Let me use a lot of water. The sky is much darker at the top, so let me mix a darker shade for the top. This paper that I'm using, by the way, is from the Strathmore Visual Journal. Let's see if the colors can blend. I'm going to tilt the paper and let the colors flow down and see if they can blend. So there's actually a lot of grays here, so I might as well paint those areas. This is quite a good paper. You can get really nice grays from the three colors. I have painted all the grays. Now it's time to mix the green. So we'll use lemon yellow and cobalt blue. So as shown by the color wheel earlier, you can mix a rather dark green using lemon yellow and cobalt blue. So this is the green. Let's add a bit of red to make it a bit darker. Or maybe a bit more blue to make it a bit darker. So someone on YouTube was asking whether or not I let 
the so someone on YouTube was asking me whether I mix the colors on the palette before applying onto the paper or mix them on the paper. I do a mixture of both. So I try to mix the color on the palette first and apply onto the page. If the color is not what I want, then I will mix again, sometimes on the palette. Sometimes I will just mix it directly on the paper. Now this color here, this is a pretty dark color. It's covering my pen lines. So I'm not able to see the lines anymore. And here lies the problem with painting with opaque colors or mixing colors with opaque colors. When you mix an opaque color with a transparent color, the result is going to be opaque. So lemon yellow in this case is opaque or semi-opaque and the resulting mixture is opaque. So you get a color that feels very much like gouache because of the opacity. When you are drawing with pen and ink or pencil and you want to use watercolor over the lines, if you want the colors to show through, if you, sorry, if you want the lines to show through the colors, it's always best to use transparent watercolor for mixing, for everything. And not just that, when you use transparent watercolors, the colors are also going to be a bit more vibrant. Because as the light shines through the colors and gets reflected back from the paper, you get the colors are bouncing back. So it makes the colors more vibrant. For the trees in the background, I need them to be a bit paler a bit more desaturated because they are much further away. So let me add a bit more red to the green to really tone down the green color and add a bit more water to it so that the color is muted. And now for the last stage, I'm going to mix the three colors in concentration to paint the really dark areas like the dark windows, the blacks, the shadows in the trees. We'll paint the shadows in the trees first. We need to use a lot of blue. That's why I always use up the blues really fast. Actually, there's probably no need for me to draw the windows using pen. In the first place because when I paint like this when I'm painting the windows those lines they aren't needed anymore you use lines to create contrast to tell people that there is something there but when you're painting with dark values like this it creates contrast as well so there's no need for those ink lines in the first place And this is where having a brush with a sharp tip is really useful. So this is the completed sketch. This is a rather muted color palette. I think it works well for this cloudy day scene. Lovely granulation from Cobalt Blue. There are traces of red in this wash as well because I mixed the greys using the three colors. more lemon yellow here i added a lot more water so that i can get the transparency so that i can get the lines to show through so for the windows here it's a mix of concentrated paint so this green here for the trees i mixed with lemon yellow and cobalt blue because lemon yellow is not transparent, the resulting mixture is also not transparent. So you can see the lines, they are almost covered by the paint. 
and for darker areas here I added block rate to get the shadow tones and if there are any lines beneath they are most certainly covered some orange but I added a lot of water to get uh, this pale orange because these buildings they are quite um, far away and the day was quite um, the air is quite bad sometimes in Singapore because of the smog you know those smoke that are factories they are spewing out on this particular day there was quite a lot of dust in the air so for the buildings right in the background it's almost very difficult to see them actually the trees here they should be I mean the colors they should be much lighter something like this buildings the gray wash I really love the grays that can be mixed from this three colors they are really beautiful uh, grays like this you can get uh, traces of colors in it if you let the colors mix on the paper rather than mix them completely on your palette the color mixes that I have used for this sketch has a rather muted toned down look to it I did not use the colors in concentration I did not use the colors as bright as they come from the pen so I mixed them around to get the grays the neutrals because it was a really cloudy day colors they are not really popping so I think for the three colors that I have used today it's very suitable for painting subjects like this of course if you want to get really intense vibrant colors uh, you can do so as well so that's all for my limited color palette video today it's always fun to test out colors different combinations of colors there is always something to learn from painting from color mixing Thanks for watching. I hope this video is informative. See you in the next video. Bye.